manage to send somebody to these long sentences. Then you got to think about when these people are passing these bills for, you know, uh, extended uh, sentences for certain things and all this stuff like that. What's really behind that? What's, what's the driving force? Is it because crime is running so rampant or is it because there's an economical uh, advantage to doing something like that? I would, I would venture to say it's economics. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely is economics. And I think that there's a point that's really important to make here, and that is, so this bill that we talked about that's live in the session, um, the sponsor for this bill in the House is Representative Joe Towns out of Memphis. Um, who's just a, a tremendous asset, I think, to our General Assembly. And this is a great bill that he's sponsoring. And, and one objection may be, well, wait a minute. If we amend this in the Tennessee Constitution, does that mean we close all the prisons and everybody just leaves? No. Because Article I, Section 32 of the Tennessee Constitution allows for the creation and maintenance of safe and humane prisons in the state of Tennessee. Now, what I would argue, mm. and I'm sure Pastor mm. Walker would yes. argue, is that they are neither safe it's nor safe humane, nor humane. <laughs> yeah. but but what this does mean is that if Representative Towns' bill passes, prisoners will still be prisoners, but by God, they won't be slaves. You know, and I think from a faith perspective and from a political perspective, regardless of what side of the aisle someone sits on, slavery is simply indefensible in the state. And, 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 and in any state what about, <laughs> in the country. Uh, is there some kind of mass movement that that is underway in reference to trying to deal with this is a problem. And I think you mentioned right. the fact that some states compensate <laughs> prisoners and some states don't and et cetera. Uh, is, is there any kind of movement that uh, will attempt to abolish not only slavery in mm -hmm. Tennessee, mm -hmm. but abolish slavery in the prison system as slavery was abolished by the 13th right. Amendment to the Constitution? Right, well, I think to the extent there is a, a mass movement, um, exist and that we've seen a real shift in the national conversation about mass incarceration and about the fact that while incarceration for periods of time may be defensible, mass incarceration is not. And that mood has certainly shifted. So um, when people ask me sometimes, am I uh, in despair, or pessimistic since the election? Because of course CCA or mm -hmm. core civic whatever they want to brand themselves. Mm -hmm. Their stocks were down prior to Trump being elected, and of course, as soon as he got elected, they shot right back up again. Um, no, we In are- In anticipation of what? That, that he would, the, of course, uh, mm -hmm. want to increase privatization. So the feds had issued um, indications that they were going to pull out the private prison business, mm -hmm. that this, there was no indication that they actually saved money, um, which they don't, which may be another discussion for another mm -hmm. show. Um, but also, they certainly aren't as safe and aren't as well run. But we're not pessimistic because 85% of prisons are state prisons, not federal. And this is an issue that still, that criminal justice reform is a really big deal right now across this country because the way things have been occurring since the mid-90s, it doesn't make economic sense. It's not good policy. It doesn't make communities safer. It's not realistic about issues like recidivism. Um, and as we said before, it is destroying communities. And so... Well, it seems that the right. only uh, visible thing is that it's making a lot of people a lot of money. Well, it is making you a lot of people incarceration. a lot of money. You say incarceration. Now, it's, that's a very, very expensive, expensive. Uh, situation, and it brings in a lot of money. Right. And, and, and they're using just a minimal amount of that money for the upkeep and, and, and the, and, and, and the uh, running of the prisons. Right. Is, is that... Well, it's certainly not being spent on uh, food that's edible. It's mm -hmm. definitely not being spent on health care. I mean, one of the things we did was we worked to organize a lawsuit concerning hepatitis C, mm -hmm. um, which is being untreated, basically, in Tennessee prisons. When we filed that suit, there are almost 3,500 prisoners that the system knew about who mm -hmm. had hepatitis C and eight were receiving treatment at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. so, I mean, they're certainly not providing for programs to reduce recidivism because, okay, let's say you work at a core civic prison, let's say you work for a private prison, mm -hmm. what is your incentive to actually introduce good quality programming? What's your incentive to keep families together? What's your incentive to try to help encourage visitation instead of prohibit visitation? What's your incentive to really want to make sure that person doesn't come back? You don't have any incentive mm -hmm. because I promise you, you have shares in the corporation that you work for. I mean, this is common sense. And the only incentive is, is to bring more people in. Because the more people you bring in and of pay course. them at 13, uh, 13 cents an hour? Yeah. 
pack. Thirteen dollars. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaning toward thirteen. Thirteen, actually, yeah. thirteen cent an hour. Absolutely. That's no compensation yeah. at all. And, and the guys are, are reaching out to get those jobs because it gives you an opportunity to, to, to get out of the cell mm -hmm. and, and to be active, you know, to move around and stuff Either like you that. become involved in some kind of some labor kind of activity or you sit in your cell all day. Yeah. Is that, are you given that choice? Uh, pretty much sitting mm -hmm. around doing too much, much uh, of nothing. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, you also have the choice to not work. If you choose not to work, then you're written up for disciplinary, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go to solitary confinement which your mental health then begins to deteriorate. And so you are really forced to, in a real sense, sure. uh, to work in, in, in a prison, sure. uh, some kind of uh, employment. Every, every person in mm -hmm. prison has some kind of em employment. Is that true? It, well, no, not every person because there are enough jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, but people would prefer to be active, mm -hmm. right? Anyone who thinks that prisoners have it easy, what is it, three hots and a yeah, cot, right. <laughs> are completely disconnected from the reality yeah, of the prison system yeah, today. For sure. Um, but do we have, do we have time? We've got this, re we, we, you know, we're talking about prison reform. There are a number of very good reform bills and sponsored by Republicans, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. Democrats, but by Republicans in the Tennessee legislature this session. So there is reason to be optimistic. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and we've got trainings happening in Nashville. Mm -hmm. um,